Hey guys, who's ready to paint an Easter gnome? First, you're going to need to outline the bunny and all your small little details that you don't want to lose. Once you've done that, you can grab a sponge brush and some cream or white paint, and we'll start out with his beard. The wood soaks up a lot of paint, so I usually start off with a good amount. Once you have the first coat on, you're gonna dry it with a hair dryer or give it a few minutes to dry on its own and go back for your second coat. For each color, you're gonna do two coats of paint and dry in between. Once your second coat is on, don't forget to dry it or give it a few minutes to dry on its own. Next, you'll need a smaller brush for the little details of the bunny. And I'm gonna paint mine like a chocolate bunny. You can use any kind of chocolate colored brown, but I use territorial beige. When I'm painting smaller details, I'll take my brush and kind of outline that detail and then fill it in. You can paint your little bunny however you want. Every Easter, we always get chocolate bunnies, so I felt the need to do a chocolate bunny. And of course, had to have a bite out of his ear. The wood soaks up the paint pretty quickly, so you'll see me going back, adding a little bit more paint with the bristle brush over and over again. Once you get a good coating all over your little bunny, you're going to dry it with a hair dryer or let it dry and go over it with a second coat. Using the same brush as the brown, I'm going to dip it into some cream to give me a lighter brown of the same color. I'm just going to outline the bunny with this light brown, giving it a shiny chocolate look. Moving on to his hat, the first color you're going to need is a Key West or a light blue and a sponge brush. Painting the first line on his hat with the light blue. Then we're going to dry it with a hair dryer and go back with the second coat. Once you have your second coat dried, you're going to grab another sponge brush and some light purple. I use Petunia. We're going to paint the second line on his hat, filling it all the way in with the purple. Once the first coat is complete, we're going to dry it and go back over with a second coat. second coat of purple is done, I'm going to dry it and we'll move on to the green. I used a lime sherbet green, but you can use any light green that you prefer. Once the third line is covered in green, we're going to dry it and move on to the second coat. Once you are done, you're going to dry it before moving on to the next coat. 
Now you will need another sponge brush and a pink. I chose fuchsia, but you can do any pink that you like. Colors like pink and yellow can be tricky to cover, so you might have to do two or three coats depending on the type of paint you use. Another trick is to paint it white first and then go back over with the pink or the yellow. Always make sure you dry in between coats and before moving on to the next color. Once your pink is dry, you can grab another sponge brush and some yellow. I like to use apple barrel paint, but you can use any kind of brand. As long as it is acrylic paint, it should be good. First coat is dried, moving on to the second. Once your second coat of yellow is on and dried, you'll need to grab that light blue sponge brush and some more light blue and we'll end our hat with the blue. Once your second coat is dried and complete, we're going to move on to his shoes. You can paint his shoes any color you would like. I decided to go ahead and paint them pink. Once your first coat is on, you can dry it and move on to your second coat. Now that his feet are done, we're going to move on to his hands and his nose. You can use any color that you would like. I found a sun-kissed peach color that I'm going to use. Once you're done with your first coat, don't forget to dry and then move on to your second coat. Now we are going to outline all his small details with some black paint or you can use a Sharpie paint pen. They are my absolute favorite, super easy to use, three or four dollars at Walmart. They are oil-based paint in a marker and glide on smoothly. We're just going to outline all of our small details. I usually like to take a little bit of a, a space or a break in between my lines. Um, my signature move is to add a few little dots. You can do that or you can do your own little thing. Whatever you feel comfortable with. And we're going to outline his beard and all the details like his hat and his feet. Once you are done outlining, grab your string and a pair of scissors. Our cutouts are pre-drilled for you guys. If you get some paint inside those holes, no big deal. Just use your scissors to twist out and clear out the paint. You're going to pull your string through, tie a knot in the front on both sides. And that is it. You can hang him on your door. You're completely done.
I hope you enjoyed painting with us. If you would like to paint your own, check out our link on Etsy. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.